Welcome to your golf channel. I'm your resident PGA coach, Jed Walters. Today's video is a little bit different. I want to take you on a journey. The journey in particular is mine. I am about to start playing golf again. I don't do it a lot and it's time I made time to play more golf. So I'm going to take you on my journey of understanding my golf swing going through the process of how difficult it is, no matter what skill level you are, whether you're a pro, whether you're a single figure golfer, wanting to be a single figure golfer, just wanting to get better and break 90 or 100. It's a painstakingly slow process. There's no quick fix. You can't skip any parts. You can't press fast forward. Um, it's not a game of perfect, as Bob Rotella once said. Um, it is hard work, hard graft, perseverance, dedication, plain and simple. I'm gonna take you on my journey from lessons, practice, results when you go and play. Um, it's water and all, there's no editing. It's just put the camera down, press record, off we go. For my journey, I um, go in to see my good friend, Darren Hotwood, um, and we are gonna go through this journey together. Hopefully you guys can come and join me, enjoying the ride asking questions to both me and Darren in the comments box below about anything regarding the videos or your golf swings or any questions that you want to know a little bit more about what we've done. Um, yeah, enjoy the ride and uh, I'll show you exactly how hard it is to learn how to play golf. Morning everyone, today I am down for my first golf lesson in around about yeah, that many years, if you've got to count back that long, it's a long, long time. Um, I am here at the home of Hopwood Golf with my good friend Darren Hopwood. Darren, how are you this morning? Very well, thank you. Um, so, Darren is going to help me to learn a little bit more about what it is that I'm doing in my golf swing, which is the kick with the backside that I need to get out and play. Um, for a lot of my students, they'll know that I play golf very little. Um, once in the last 12 months, four times in the last two years. An average probably before that, maybe five or six times a year. So I haven't played competitively for about 12, 13 years um, and I'm playing less and less and less. So this is the, the time to restart before I end up too old to be able to swing the club properly on the golf course. So I've enlisted the help of Darren for this project um, to help me understand where I am at the minute what it is that I need to work on. Uh, we're going to put a plan in place for me to work on. You will see that in a, uh, a weekly video uh, of what it is that I'm working on, why I'm working on it, how it's going, warts and all, shanks and tops, fats and thins. Won't be many of them. Yeah, fingers crossed there's not going to be many of them. Uh, so let's get stuck in. We're forward to it. Come on, let's do it. So generally speaking, ball flight wise, uh, historical big, me, <laughs> me historical miss is left. Okay. So I will hit normally a draw, but then it will, when, and when it goes left, it goes. Okay. It goes yeah, left. Yeah. Starting yeah. left, curving left. Uh, starting straight. Straight and then curving yeah. left, quickly, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So good shots will be a little bit of a, a right and start, but then, you know, the, when, when it's off, it's off. Right, okay. Yeah. You want to hit the adjustment then? Take your time, do exactly what you normally do. Let your cube down before you start throwing it. Straight shot to the ball, down the channel between the 100 and the 150, yeah. so you've got the white notes in the distance. As you're knocking these down, just give me a pretty, you know, give me a fair assessment as to whether it's what you normally do. Yeah, I mean, a little bit, a little bit skiddy. Yeah. Do you need to find that? Um, Sometimes it's like a bit random on different days. Sometimes I'll strike the ground really nicely, yeah, yeah. and then other times, yeah, a little lock. Yeah, that's the left one. Yeah, and it's um, you know, I think sometimes, I know, especially when I go out and play, it's like I'll stand on the range and you practice, and you can almost sort of feel on a given day, right, okay, that's okay, you know, strikes good there, and then you'll go into the days where it feels awful, yeah. go and play golf, but then I'll play golf on the rare times that I do, and not really have a sort of plan for the shot, which really is, it's everything that goes against what we do on a daily basis. Yeah. 
You know, it's, it's just not practicing what you preach. What are your feels at the minute, Ted? When you're hitting these down, what sort of, what are your priorities? What are you trying to do with yourself? So I'm just trying to feel like I keep a little bit more central in the backswing. Yeah. Um, and then that I maintain the, the arms moving through a little bit more. Because normally I'm pretty good with rotation, but sometimes I get a little lazy. Um, and I don't maintain sort of speed. So this next one back towards you, okay. So the sort of speed of maintenance is uh, and it feels it's one of those things, isn't it? It feels like I don't keep my arms moving at the same rate. Pretty again, pretty good example of what you get, that sort of left. Starting straight, curving a little bit too far left. Yeah. And then, as obviously, you're just not quite as as critical of yourself. Yeah. You don't analyze yourself in the same detail. It's um, the objective. In yeah. Side, so you know, you look at some things, you think, yeah, that's okay there, and you sort of brush that bit under the carpet, even though you know, if you had a student in front of you. You know, you'd look at it in more detail. Yeah, you tend to. The problem when you're looking at your old swing is you look at things that historically have caused you issues. So it might not be relevant to the shot pattern you're hitting at the minute, yeah. but it's something you've done for the last 15 years and it really sort of doesn't sit well with you. Oh, there's a bit left one. Yeah, it's going to come up on the big screen for you. I don't know if you want to. Um, obviously, you, yeah. you can edit this out. It's completely up to yourself. I can yeah. do this as a video I'll and then send it to you. Not let me just. In fact, just, just carry it over. I was going to say, what I can do is I can do a screen yeah. recording anyway. Yeah, you can do and that. And then as well, just whiz yeah. it across yeah. so you've got it on the. Um, okay. But if I sort of move out of the way there for you. So first things first, impact. You see the swing on the right. There's a big differential between right arm of right forearm, left yeah. forearm. Handles raising quickly. Um, whenever the handles raising quickly, the amount of closure on your club face is going to increase. So from that position, you see their impact. I tend to always do this anyway with a better player. You go sort of two impacts, have a quick look what goes on, just through, and then start working your way back. So initially, we're seeing forearms that are sort of there's a big difference between right and left that's suggesting that the swings direction now is too much out to the right which you're going to see with your hand path as you come through you've got wrists that uncock in too quick whenever the wrists uncock too quick the amount that you can close the club face is going to increase so when you're coming into impact there now you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't you leave your club face passive with that sort of hand path you're going to block it out to the right yeah any amount of closure on that club face is too hard to regulate. Um, doesn't really matter how hard you're trying to turn. There's a lot of guys out there trying to turn hard, um, trying to open up through it, but can't actually do so because of what goes on before. So swings directed too much to the right, rate of closure is a little bit too high or too hard to regulate. Coming into impact, pretty strong club face, toe end down. Could do with softening that up a little bit. Um, unless we change how you move through the hit, we'll play around the bolt. Pretty good at five. Four, we get a little, get a lot of run out, don't we? We get yeah. too much load into the wrist, too much load into the trail arm. Ideally, at the top of the backswing, there. I'd like to see you more here. Yeah. That last little bit where it runs out. If you look at what your body does, I mean, you're trying to coordinate your pivot and your levers here. So you're loading your levers and you're pivoting in a certain manner. So the pivot from here to the top of your backswing the completion of your backswing there's very little knees don't change flex anymore pelvis isn't extending spine isn't really extending pivots maxed out at that point now as you go further the right arm loads more the wrist load more you've just made it really hard to coordinate that bearing swing so that's the first thing that i look at doing is just take a little bit off that backswing 
So you're going to say something before, so? Yeah, no, historically always been like that. Yeah. I don't know where that comes from, sort of learning as a, as a kid. Um, literally just <coughs> picking up a five iron, my dad, so about yeah. seven, eight years old, and because it was full length and heavy. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Whether that sort of development comes in from that, I don't know. I think you can do. I think your formative yeah. years play a part, don't you? In the way you play, you've got like you almost like your golfing DNA, yeah. isn't it? It's, it's whatever you do in those early early years definitely lingers. Um, a big thing really here is if you, you were talking before about working with one of your students. It's that balance between sort of freedom and discipline. There's a lot of there's a lot of freedom to your swing, which is great. Some of your alignments, particularly there at P4, just need tidying up um, and having an appreciation of exactly where you want the club at that point. So we want the right arm loading to 90 degrees. We want the shaft loading at 90 degrees to the lead arm. Now, you know, you do see players at the top level who do run those arms out a little bit longer. Who some do lift their arms off the rib cage, but it isn't the easiest way to do it for most people. They make that work as opposed to that being the norm, like that being the preferred sort of model if you will or, or template for your goal swing so what I'm seeing there is a player who loads the levers for too long pivots quite nicely to be fair I mean you've done your own work anyway you know about the extension and the side bend um, added to the rotation so you've got that in place it's just more discipline with your levers now what that's going to do then is that's going to have a, a knock on effect downstream so when you start coming through the ball things will start looking a little bit different I'm going to tidy P4 up first courtesy of a few little um, little drills and feels that we'll go through and then once we've done that we'll start looking at how that move changes and how do we control the hand path through the hip yeah. and particularly the exit that exit needs bringing down but it may start to lower courtesy of what you do with your backswing change anyway okay yeah, do you want to yeah. get to the can we move it yeah. that way just yeah, fraction, of course, yeah. get better down yeah. line yeah, yeah. certain pressure points. The pressure yeah. point I'm going to work on you with now is pressure point five, which is your trail arm against your torso. Okay. Okay. So anybody who swings excessively long in, in the back swing separates that fifth pressure point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place that at the highest level to start with. Now we're going to play around with this. You can have this pressure point at different levels. Okay. But we're going to start with it as it's more sort of um, at its easiest level, and it's probably its most common. Right. So if you can keep the squeeze on that head cover for me all the way through the yeah. swing, please. This is back swing, it'll feel a little bit odd on the way through when we first start doing it. That's good. So I'll chip a few forward, just keep that squeeze on. Okay. That's good. You'll see straight away when you watch that back that it's a little bit shorter in the arm, yeah. a little bit less lifted. It's one of them, isn't that sort of feel versus real feel? Yeah, like yeah. It feels like I've just gone to the there. Yeah. Okay. Now the three swing, that coming out in the three swing is a sign that the hands are just projected out to the right a little bit too yeah. much, which we saw when we looked at on video. So don't worry about that too much for now. Try and keep the squeeze on both sides if you can. These next few jets, what I want you to do is I want you to feel like you're going to use no wrist on the way back. So the feeling now is to squeeze the head cover under the, under the armpit. Yeah. That squeeze should be put on at like 10 out of 10. You can't squeeze that yeah. tight enough, okay? And then I want you to feel like you've got absolutely no loading of the wrist. Okay. So squeeze that fifth pressure point, no loading of the wrist. Excellent. Show me that. Put one down there now. Okay, same again for me. Now 
Vieni sempre per salve. So this next one is a visual for you or is a feel for you. Squeezing the head cover under the arm. Mm -hmm. As you go back, I want you to get the club so that it's pointing to the roof yeah. rather than pointing towards the target. That would be the feel for you. So that's going to reduce the loading of the wrists even further. Very good. that one back yeah yeah so you've got you got your feet you've got free shot yeah which is looking really good right so pivot's not changing the moment you lift your arms is starting to reduce because if you lose that pressure yeah. point the head is going to come out um, and you can see there's a dramatic difference in the way you load your wrist so your your back swing is an exercise in pivoting and loading your levers or loading your accumulators. So what you have, you have too much loading of the right arm, too much loading of the wrist, and the arms were also lifting off the torso. So <laughs> if you were going to come and say, right, I want to be the most inconsistent golfer imaginable, I want to blow people away with their erratic arm, I'd have you doing a number of things. Well. Lift the arms, <laughs> move from side to side, and feel like you're going to roll the club face a lot. So you, there's a lot of that involved in the way you're playing, isn't there, the way you're swinging. So on this one, that's a really good pre-shot pre rehearsal on that. As you take the club back on this one now, you see the difference between what you, you were previously longer and more lifted yeah. than that. So Down. you're starting yeah, to right. reduce, yeah? But the difference is that right arm, in particular the wrist, just load for a little bit too long, not it? So it's just getting a feel for that at the moment. You've got a really good image in your mind of what you want to try and achieve. But the difference between those two at the moment yeah. is quite marked, isn't it? Yeah. However, if you compare those to your previous swing, your original swing, you're starting to move. Big so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go on in front of you and control how that loads. Yeah. All right? Yeah. So we'll do sort of maybe five, ten minutes of this, mm. and then we'll have a little look at it on film again. Mm. You think? As for me, holding it maybe a little too much into the fingers on the left hand will affect that. Or is it negligible at the minute? When you, if you've got a palm biased left hand grip, the likelihood is you're going to be more, what you would want to see is a little bit more bold at the top, and you'd expect to see a little bit less loading of the wrist. Putting it in the fingers would have maybe a flatter, you wouldn't want to see a cut lead wrist, a little bit flatter lead wrist, so um, with a little bit more wrist hinge. But the problem you've got is in hinging the wrist more, you've got to start extending the wrist. So you can only hinge the wrist so far to get any and keep the wrist flat, to get any more wrist hinge on that, or to get the appearance of having more wrist hinge. What you're actually doing is you're adding the hinging of the wrist to the extending of the wrist. Now the problem you've got now is that's all got to be flattened out as you're coming down at speed. It becomes really difficult to manage. So if you look at the players you work with, you see far more straight hitters with a slightly bold or flat lead wrist than you can a cut lead wrist because it doesn't have to be managed the same to impact so when you're moving at speed and you're flattening that out and that's why the handle raises so quickly and you get a sensation then of that like standing up and stalling through impact so even when you try to rotate continuously you almost can't you've got to put the brakes on at last minute to flatten everything out you yeah. so your grip can play part to a degree but you can have it really in your fingers and still manage the loading on it. It's just excessive loading, really. Okay, so I'm going to take care of your lead arm. So if you show yeah. me a pre shot. There you go. So you're nowhere near that shaft at that point. Yeah. Okay, just going to control that in your back swing. Good. So absolutely no loading with the wrist. That would be your thought for the back swing. Better effort. Now what you're going to experience then is a completely different sequence of moves required from the top down to impact. So that's going to, you have to like just set a little bit on that. Don't react too much to the golf ball's flight at the moment. 
byproducts. Yeah. That's good. What do you feel you've got to do to make that stay in the three swing? Is that what you mm. Well, just really feel like it's right in, yeah. Well, so what is it making I'm you just, feel? I'm just feeling here, you almost just feel like I'm right in there. So yeah, it feels okay. like the elbow's really yeah. forward yeah. as it comes through. And then what Again, do you almost use from there? a little bit like you're saying, getting lazy with the arm yeah, yeah. down, so you know, yeah. it almost stops that yeah. happening because yeah, yeah. you already be there. Yeah. I just feel like here, and then that last one there, I just made sure that I just kept moving forward yep. a bit more. I didn't move forward anywhere near as much on the previous one. Sounds like it's a little bit more strike there as well, yeah. not as skinny. So that feeling of um, that skinny shot that you talked about, when you look at your original swing, you've got the forearms that are massively different in the impact. So right arm substantially longer than the left. You've got a handle that's raising quickly, which means the arc's widening quickly. So therefore you've got to pull away with the chest. So there's the, you know, that's, that would explain you hitting the ball thin. Also, any time you move the swing's direction excessively to the right, you start to shallow out the angle and attack too much. So as the swing starts to line up, it's not just a, not just a shot direction thing that you'll see. You'll actually see your angle and attack sticking a little bit, and you'll start getting a better strike from the place again. Same again. Good. Squeezing the head cover 10 out of 10, no load in the wrist. Yeah. Just gonna film this next one, Chad, alright? Yeah. You do a couple of pre-shots before I get in there, please. See on these is your body and your arms are working more in conjunction with one another. Mm -hmm. um, they aren't sort of working against one another. That's really about that last one. Well, you're not, I mean, th there's no reason for you not to have the club cover as much. Yeah. Um, what you often find, you'll experience this yourself as a teacher, when you find that people start changing some things in anticipation of other things they're going to do further into the swing. So we've not talked about you know, the alignment of your club, uh, things you want to take away and not go down the hands as much, but in this instance that's what's starting to happen. So, what we're trying to see here is just less loading of the right arm on the way back and definitely less loading of the wrist and we can see that at that point in the swing so if we look at these at p3 picture the shafts a little bit yeah. different the 
take you down to P6. Big difference there at 4. So there you've got your fifth pressure point being squeezed. Yeah, and it's being squeezed at its top level. You can work that if you wanted to really get into the downswing aspect of it. You can put that more mid bicep mm -hmm. or even just below it or just above the elbow. Um, but for now, we've just got it at the top of the bicep just to prevent that sort of extra mm -hmm. little bit of lift. So there's less loading of the right arm. There's less loading of the wrists. Importantly, there's less, less lifting of the arms off the torso. So now your transition can be a lot cleaner. Lead wrist still pretty flat, if not a little bit bold, yeah. um, which again doesn't necessarily um, lend itself to you having. So you have no issue with that. If, if you want to bold that wrist a little bit, that's fine. But your grip needs to complement it. Mm -hmm. Now someone like DJ who's got that grip, sort of very strong, very much in the fingers. Is quite unusual really because most of the guys you see with that bone at the top tend to have that weaker grip, Ram, um, Spieth, Morikawa to a degree, he only puts a little bit in the um, Deschambo. But in your case, you've got more of a fingers grip, which is I've no issue with, but we just don't want it bowing too much. So, interested to see where we get. Not quite as steep at P5. Let's these up. Right, so. Now you've seen a little bit less difference between the forearms at impact. The handle's not raising yeah. as quickly. Now if the handle isn't raising as quickly and you keep the squeeze on that pressure point. So that pressure point primarily we've talked about in the backswing. But if you keep that pressure point or for you to keep that pressure point on in the through swing, you cannot afford to project hands too far to the right. In order to do that, you've got to stand up. You've got to uncock the wrist. That move is very typical of what you would do. Yeah. To keep the head cover under the arm all the way through, you've got to make more of this move. So your hand path's going to be different. Your hand yeah. is raising less. Your wrist don't uncock as quick. That's a difference in the space. Your exit, the yeah. the exit. Your exit through the ball now is much lower. There's less face closure. To be honest, from here to here, you can cheat a little bit in regards to the way the club face looks. The main thing is, are we tracing the arc in a more appropriate manner? Yes, we are. We're also seeing a little gap between the knees. Yeah. Now, our model would suggest there shouldn't be a gap here, but for a player who hits out excessively and whose problem is a hook, I can live with there being a little bit more gap there because that's a sign that you're rotating through the hit a little bit more. But it's not just rotation. You're also side bending, and this is one of the problems people get who are trying to rotate. So you mentioned at the start about the rotation aspect <coughs> of it. If you get to P4 and you think that you've got to rotate and open up, you do you do rotate continuously but you're always doing three things so if you just think it's rotation you're going to get to the top you're going to transition like this and the problem is everything's going to come out the shaft's going to go steep and you can't play golf from there yeah. so there you start to pull away uncock the wrists and the handle raises and you actually end up less open than you would have been had you not even tried to rotate so it's like it's, it's an ironic thing but that's just how it works out so your move through the ball there now is a combination of you rotating more continuously while side bending so the right shoulder is lower to the ground at p7 yeah. than it was previously right arm is the right arm in your case is still soft but it's not under this yeah. way as much you mentioned before about your elbow being a little bit more out in front of you which is an yeah, so let's keep doing that, yeah. I'll let you do these next few on your own devices, okay? I'm going to film you from the different angles again. So, so big squeeze, no more than the rest. Excellent, that. Really good. The whole thing there looks, for one of the better descriptions, just as a, if you were looking at that purely by the eye, not the yeah. camera or anything like that, the whole thing looks more together. Yeah. It doesn't look it like. It feels tight. Yeah. yeah. More compact, easy yeah. to sequence.
It's just a little bit excessive with the less than the there. Yeah. Only a touch. Enough. Only a touch. So when you miss long and excessively, they've got to unload more in the downswing. When they unload more in the downswing, it's harder to manage. Yeah. That doesn't mean to say that we don't want any load in the wrist, because we clearly do. But we need to load them a certain amount. We can't just load them for the sake of loading. We're being able to manage it. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. got to be disciplined. It's got to be loaded to a certain point. I think it's that thing, isn't it? It's, it's, had, it's having the sort of the right balance on either side, so that when you when you are in a position where you might feel a little pressure, yeah. it's reliable. It's not going to break down. Thanks for watching the first part of the lesson. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And any questions that you might have for me or Darren, please post them in the comments box below down there as well. Uh, and don't forget to check out Darren's links there. So his social media and his website are on there. Go over to his social media, give him a follow, check out his website. Lots of great information there from him and also lots more to come from the rest of this journey as well. Don't forget, if you like the video, click the little thumb just in there. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Thanks for watching.